Joining me now is CNN's chief legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin. Uh, Jeffrey, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Uh, you warned that this day was coming, and, and it came. You were, you were dead on uh, about this, Jeffrey. And typically, when the Supreme Court reverses itself, uh, it's to grant more rights, uh, not to take them away after 50 years. How do you think this is going to go down uh, in the history of the Supreme Court? Well, this Court? is certainly a major moment in the history of the Supreme Court. And uh, I don't know uh, how it will be regarded in the future. But, you know, the reason it was preordained is because the conservative movement mobilized uh, to make its political influence felt in the Republican Party. I mean, you know, Donald Trump said in the campaign repeatedly, including in one debate with Hillary Clinton, he said, I am going to appoint justices who will vote to overturn Roe versus Wade. He appointed three justices who who voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. And when you combine that with Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, who had already expressed their desire to do so, you know, that doesn't make me a clairvoyant. That just makes me someone who listens to what people say. And wow. um, th that's just so. So, you know, this decision was was in no way a surprise. And as you know, uh, Jeffrey, the, I mean, the repercussions are far reaching. There are states with uh, trigger bans. Uh, going into into place. There are states with very outdated laws. I mean, laws that date back uh, decades, uh, more than a century, in, I guess, in Wisconsin's case. So it goes back to 1849, and it, it, it's, you know, up in the air to some extent what's going to happen in some of these places. But the repercussions could go even further than that. Justice Clarence Thomas, in his concurring opinion, uh, had said uh, that they should reconsider the due process precedents of other cases, uh, including same-sex marriage. Um, what do you think? I mean, how far reaching could well, this be? It, it, it's enormous, and it doesn't just affect the red states. I mean, remember, uh, many of the states that are that are declaring abortion illegal are also saying that anyone who aids or abets an abortion could be criminally prosecuted. That means people in blue states who send money, who send medication abortions to to people in red states, they could be prosecuted. What about the corporations um, who are saying we will pay to have our employees travel to places where they can get an abortion? Is that aiding and abetting an abortion? I mean, the legal, the, just the practical legal implications of uh, the decision yesterday uh, are enormous. And that's even before you get to the point you were raising about Clarence Thomas's opinion, which I mean, he's right in that the logic of the Dobbs opinion, the one from yesterday, certainly does suggest that uh, laws uh, th that that laws uh, limiting contraception, limiting uh, cons consensual sexual activity, uh, banning same-sex marriage, that logic would suggest those laws could stand. And I have to ask you about this. I don't know if you saw this tweet uh, from Senator John Cornyn of Texas. Uh, he was tweeting a response to uh, former President Barack Obama. Obama was criticizing the overturn, overturning of Roe versus Wade, the overturning of precedent. And I guess uh, Senator Cornyn uh, retweeted Obama and said, now do Plessy versus Ferguson, Brown versus Board of Education. Um, obviously, uh, going back uh, to those uh, momentous decisions, what did you think of that? I, I think he's been widely misunderstood, and he's issued some clarifying tweets. You know, it's it's sometimes a good idea uh, to express yourself at greater length than 240 characters. What he was well, saying, he, I should say, he, is, he tweeted a clarification saying, th "Thank goodness yes. some SCOTUS presidents yeah, are overruled." Did. And, and, and yeah. his, his original tweet, um, all it meant was that some bad Supreme Court decision should be overturned, and he meant that Plessy versus. It's a good thing that Plessy was overturned by Brown v. Board of Education. Now he means it's a good thing that Roe v. Wade was overturned by Dobbs. Um, you know, people can disagree with him about abortion, but he was not saying that we should go back to the days of uh, separate but equal. And I have to ask you, Jeffrey, if, um, how, how did we get to the Dobbs decision? I know you and I have talked about this before. Had Amy Coney Barrett not been rushed onto the Supreme Court, uh, which, you know, flew in the face of what Mitch McConnell said uh, when he blocked Merrick Garland uh, back uh, when Merrick Garland was being put forward by the Obama administration. Had, the, had those events not taken place, we would not have this Dobbs decision yesterday. I mean, that, that is just a fair reading of events, correct? Or help me out here. 
Totally. Well, well, and, yeah. and, and it's even broad. It's even broader than that. You know, the credit or responsibility for the Dobbs decision, depending on how you view it, goes to Mitch McConnell as much as it goes to Donald Trump. He is the one that prevented Merrick Garland from placing, re replacing um, Antonin Scalia. He is the one who pushed through Brett Kavanaugh in spite of the sexual harassment allegation against him. He is the one who jammed through Amy Coney Barrett to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, in an extremely abbreviated process. Those are the three Trump justices. Two, if not all three of them, wouldn't be on the court but for Mitch McConnell. He is, a, a, he is one of the absolutely central figures in the history of the modern Supreme Court. And let's talk about this flashback uh, when Senator Susan Collins, who was against, she said she was against overturning Roe versus Wade, uh, defended voting for uh, both Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, uh, putting them on the Supreme Court. Here, here's what she said. Neil Gorsuch, for whom you voted, don't you think he's probably going to vote to overturn Roe versus Wade if given the chance? I actually don't. Are you 100% certain, without a doubt, that Brett Kavanaugh will not overturn Roe v. Wade. I do not believe that Brett Kavanaugh will overturn His precedents Roe are overturned all the time. They aren't overturned all the time. I mean, Jeffrey, uh, you know, <laughs> you and I have to also <laughs> talked about this, how uh, Kavanaugh, Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett all gave assurances. I mean, I, I know people want to dunk on Susan Collins, but those, th these, these were nominees to the Supreme Court giving the country assurances that they were not going to overturn this precedent. Um, and yet they did anyway. Um, how do you think Susan Collins' um, statements, uh, I guess, stand up now? But also, what about the fact that we have people who are putting themselves uh, forward uh, for a spot on the high court of this country who are essentially misleading the country about what their true intentions might be if Roe versus Wade were to come uh, to their desk? You, you know, the, the, um, <laughs> it's hard to know where to start. The, yeah. the, you know, Susan Collins um, is nominally an independent Republican, but who does what Mitch McConnell wants when he really needs her. You know, he vo she voted against uh, Amy Coney Barrett because she, he didn't, Mitch McConnell didn't need her vote, but he really needed her vote on Brett Kavanaugh. So I don't know if, if Susan Collins was really believing Brett Kavanaugh or she was just um, giving herself a fig leaf to do Mitch McConnell's bidding as she as she frequently does, you know, in tight circumstances. I mean, you know, and as for the justices themselves, you know, they were playing a game to get on the Supreme Court. All three of them are lawyers. So if you parse their words carefully, the way lawyers know how to speak, they did not explicitly promise to right. uphold Roe versus Wade. They left the impression that they would uphold Roe versus Wade, which was enough for Susan Collins. So, you know, this was, um, you know, a game that they were playing. But, you know, those of us who had studied the records of Brett Kavanaugh, of Amy Coney Barrett, of Neil Gorsuch, knew this day was coming. And Susan Collins had to know it, too, because anyone with any sense, and she has plenty of sense, had to know this was coming. But it, and, and it did. And here we are. And Jeffrey, we have to mention uh, that the president was asked about some of these issues, uh, in particular, uh, this idea of expanding the Supreme Court that some Democrats want him to uh, entertain. He's throwing cold water on, 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 on all of that. What do you think? You know, I, I, I guess I am enough of a traditionalist to think that's, that's a pretty bad idea. I think most people don't know that the number of Supreme Court justices is not set in the Constitution. It is simply a law like any other that that could be changed. And, uh, you know, up until just after the Civil War, the number of Supreme Court justices did change several times. But, you know, if you start getting into a situation where uh, the party that doesn't like Supreme Court decisions starts increasing the number of justices, that's an arms race that I think could not really end well uh, for the court or the country. Franklin Roosevelt uh, discovered that when he tried to increase the number of the justices um, after the New Deal. Uh, I think the, the Democrats uh, who are frustrated uh, by the Supreme Court need to do what Roosevelt did, which was win elections. And uh, that's where the future of abortion is going to be decided. Presidential elections, Supreme uh, senatorial elections, and now state elections uh, about abortion rights. 
All right, Jeffrey Tubin, uh, always good talking to you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All righty, Jim.